we are looking at a passage of scripture. We're looking at Romans chapter 16, verses 1 to 16. So grab your phone, Romans 16, 1 to 16. It's also going to come up on the screens, but um, strap in for this reading. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Centraea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend, Epenetus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatas, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear friend Statius. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother who has been a mother to me too. This is where it gets really tricky. <laughs> Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, I don't know how you pronounce that, Hermas, Petrobas, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. Thanks very much. That's why I get paid the big bucks. It's also why I didn't ask anybody else to do the reading tonight. Uh, aren't you grateful? You may be here tonight thinking, why on earth... On a Sunday, am I sitting here in church, and of all the places in the Bible that we could be reading, we've decided to read a whole bunch of greetings. Well, hopefully that will become clear uh, in just a few moments' time. But really, what I want to talk to you about tonight is a longing for belonging. A longing for belonging. Uh, many of you will know that Emily and I, we have four sons Jack, Harry, Jesse, and Theo, and a number of years ago, we took a holiday. We took our boys to the west coast of France, and uh, we started the journey. We drove to Dover, took the ferry, Dover to Calais, and then we began that long drive. And normally in our household, when we're on a long drive, particularly when the boys were small, some of you will know the formidable we story that Emily tells, and if you don't know about that, you should ask her. But normally in our household, it was the boys who needed the toilet on a journey. But on this particular occasion, it was me. And we'd been driving for a while, and I thought everything would be fine, because I went on the ferry, and I was prepared, because I'm a grown-up. But as we were driving, we were a couple of hours in, and just th this feeling began to sort of rise up. I don't know if you've ever had that before. And it sort of came on quite suddenly, and I thought, oh, it'll probably pass. So we carried on driving, and as we were driving... I just began to get more and more desperate for the toilet. And I thought, well, the services will come up. It'll be fine. The services were nowhere to be seen. And I was getting more and more desperate. And finally, the sign came. And I sped off the slip road, got into the car park, sort of handbrake turned it into a space, ran inside, saw the sign for toilets, ran in, found a cubicle, sat down. And I tell you, the great relief of just being able to just enjoy that moment. But as I sat there, you're all looking at me as if like this is church, but you've all done it. You've all done it. But as I sat there, suddenly I heard voices and they weren't male voices. And in that split second, I realized I 
do not belong here. And I sat there, and from pleasure, it turned from pleasure to fear. And it was a school trip. Loads of girls in France had come into the toilet. And I don't know what you ladies do in the toilet, but it seemed like they were in there for hours. Finally, they left. That was my moment. I kind of burst out the door, ran outside, and Emily was in the car park. She said, where on earth have you been? And I, I think she sort of thought I'd had some terrible accident or something like that. But it was that moment of feeling, I don't belong here. There's no worse feeling than feeling like we don't belong. We all want to belong somewhere or to someone. And inside of each one of us, there is this longing for belonging. It's part of our human nature. It dates back to when we're cavemen. Whether we belong to a clan or a tribe, that was the difference between life and death. And in many respects, belonging is still today vital for our survival. Brené Brown, the author, speaker, and research professor, she says this. She says, a deep sense of love and belonging is an irreducible need of all people. We're biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. And she goes on to say that if we don't belong, then it can make us feel sick. We each have this longing for belonging, a craving for community. And yet research in our society today shows that we're becoming more and more isolated from one another. People today, they're more connected digitally than ever before, but they're also more lonely personally than ever before. Maybe you have experienced that. So many friends on social me media, and yet you might feel in some way friendless. A report that was done in 2017, published by the Joe Cox Commission on Loneliness, found that 9 million people in the UK often or always feel lonely. That was the report that uh, sort of stimulated the Prime Minister at the time, Theresa May, to appoint the first minister for loneliness in this country. And she said that loneliness for many is the sad reality of modern life. That was five years ago. Since then, we've had and are in the middle of a global pandemic full of quarantine, self-isolation, lockdowns. And in this book of Romans that we have in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, he writes at great length to communicate that ultimately our longing for belonging can only be met in a relationship with God in a relationship with our Father in heaven. Belonging that's made possible through the cross. Jesus suffered. He died for us. He lost all that he had. Perfect belonging. Perfect communion with the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so that we might gain all that he had so that we might be brought in to the family of God. When Jesus died on the cross, he was all alone. Those famous words where he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment, he was separated from his father so that we might never be separated from our father in heaven. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we can encounter, we can know that we can have that relationship with God. We can know that we're children of God, sons and daughters of the King. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says, we have received the spirit of adoption and the spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children and by him we cry, Abba Father. Ultimately, our longing for belonging is found in a relationship with him. But the Apostle Paul, he doesn't leave it there. In this book, he gives us 11 chapters of deep theology. And then he goes on to talk practically about our relationships, our relationships with one another. And then in this final chapter, 
that we read, and I'm sure I mispronounced half of those names. He refers to over 25 ties of personal belonging that he's encountered. 26 individuals, two families, three house churches. Perhaps more than anyone, Paul had a theological grasp of what it means to belong, to belong in a relationship with God. But he also grasped that belonging is something that we have to work out in our relationships with one another, in our relationships in the church. And as I read this chapter earlier this week, I think one of the most significant things that struck me was Paul knew his people. He knew these people by name, and they knew him. Fundamentally, he understood that church isn't an event we attend either online or in person, but it's a place where we belong. And here we see that Paul has this sense of belonging with these people. He belongs to these people and they belong to him, but they're a diverse group of people. Paul experienced that with so many churches. If you're familiar with uh, his letters in the New Testament, you'll know this is quite a familiar thing that he does. At the beginning and at the end of his letters, he lists a group of people that he's connected with, people who he's found belonging with. But what's unusual here is just the number of people and the diversity in the list. There's men and women. There's people who are well-known and not so well-known. If you've read the Bible before at all, you may have heard of Priscilla and Aquila cropping up in other places. But I have no idea who... whatever their names are, Tryphena and Tryphosa are. I've never heard of them before. But here they are in this list. There's different ethnicities, Jews, Greeks, Romans. There's singles, couples, families, different stages, people in their different stages in their Christian journey, rich and poor, young and old, weak and strong. There's former slaves listed here, but also relatives of kings. These were people who the Apostle Paul chose to share his life with, who he chose to be vulnerable with, who he chose to be authentic with. They'd seen him at his best, and they'd also seen him at his worst. A couple of these people were in prison with him for the sake of the gospel. And what's significant, I think, about this passage is that Paul wasn't trying to do Christian faith on his own. He knew that he had to do it in the context of community. It's so often easy, I think, to think that the Apostle Paul was some super Christian, some lone ranger Christian. He had it all down. He had all the theology. But here he is in relationship with others. Maybe that was the reason why his faith was so strong, why he was able to write what he wrote, why he was able to do what he did, planting churches, having an impact. Maybe that was why he was able to endure what he did. Some passages in the New Testament where he's suffering so much for the gospel, shipwrecked, flogged, abandoned, in prison. What does that mean for us as we read this? Many of you, I'm sure, will be familiar with the illustration of a coal fire. And I'm sure you've all seen a coal fire when it's hot and burning. And if you take some tongs and you take one of those coals out of the center of the fire and you put it on the hearth, very soon that hot coal becomes cold. But if you take that coal again and you put it into the center of the fire, it becomes hot again. That is a picture of of the community of the church. And if there's nothing else that you hear tonight as part of this service or as part of this talk, I want to encourage you as your pastor, you belong in the fire. You belong as part of God's church. But I can't do that for you. And the staff can't do that for you. And actually, your friends and your family can't do that for you. That is a choice that only you can make. And it takes intentionality. 
I heard it said once that there's no community without commitment. There's no relationship without risk. There's no belonging without being vulnerable, without choosing to be inclusive. And I know what it's like. Sometimes you can come to church and you can think, oh, am I going to know anyone? I don't know if they're going to be very friendly to me. But I want to encourage you, take a step. Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone has that feeling, that longing to belong. And we can help one another. We need each other, particularly at this time. We've been scattered so much, particularly during the pandemic. But the Bible says as iron sharpens iron. In the book of Hebrews, it encourages us not to neglect meeting together. And we need one another through all stages and phases of life. When good things happen, we get that opportunity to celebrate together. And when we celebrate with others, our joy is multiplied. But also we recognize that there are difficult things that happen. Life can be tough. Just in these last few days, we've been walking with some people through some, (laughs) it's understated to say they're going through tough things. People at the end of their life, people struggling in all kinds of different ways. It's so important in those moments when we feel discouraged or disconnected, maybe when we feel weak or vulnerable, maybe when we feel under spiritual attack. It's so important in those moments that we're part of a community so that we don't drift or so that we don't become isolated. You see, as a church, we have a vision here to grow. We want to grow spiritually, but we also want to grow numerically. Living things grow. And I want to encourage us, on a Sunday, we shouldn't expect to know everyone, but we should expect to know someone. We shouldn't expect to know all the faces, but we should expect to know some faces. And that's why groups are so key to everything that we're doing here in the church. And it's a place where everyone can be needed and known. It's a place where that longing for belonging can be met in community, building friendships, growing spiritually, connecting with others. And it's probably the best way that we know to make big church feel small. We don't just want to be part of this massive crowd of people. That's the place where we grow in relationship with one another. And at the start of this year, that's why we want to make some changes to our group's model. And we're not going to really be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. What we want to do is we want to extend what we've got. We want to move and expand from our predominant model of sort of one size fits all to a mixed economy model of groups. We want to make our groups more accessible, more open, more inclusive for everyone because we recognize that different things work for different people. The world has changed. London is such a busy place to be. Some people want to go to a group in the evening. Some people want to go to a group in the daytime. Some people want to be online. Some people want to be in person. Some people want to be in a group which has got more mature Christians in it. Some people are right at the beginning of their faith journey, and they need a group which is just going to come around them. Whatever is going to help you. That's the kind of thing that we want to build here. And in many respects, we've already got a mixed economy of groups. Our younger youth are meeting now on a Sunday in a group. Our children's groups meet on a Sunday morning. Our adults' groups have been meeting generally in the evening on a Tuesday night. Our students meet on a Thursday night. Our 20s group, which is new, is meeting on a Sunday lunchtime. Our intercessors have been meeting on a Thursday morning on Zoom at 8 o'clock. There's already this mixed economy, but we want to grow and expand it so that everyone can feel like they belong. We don't want anyone to be on the periphery of this community if they don't want to be. And we recognize that we're a family, but we're not a closed family. We're a family on a mission, a place where we can invite our friends, our work colleagues, 
uh, people on our street to come in and it's an inclusive welcome. So what we're going to do, what is it going to look like? Well, broadly speaking, we're going to categorize our groups into three broad groups. So we're going to have growth groups, we're going to have interest groups, and we're going to have locality groups. What do I mean by that? Well, growth groups, are they're really going to look like the groups that you might have experienced already. So gathering together around some content. Uh, we've already got a, a subscription to Right Now Media, which is an opportunity to get brilliant content from all over the world, digitally uh, into our living rooms or wherever people are meeting. But we're also going to expand that around courses. So the bereavement journey or the parenting course, they're going to be places where we can really grow spiritually, maybe go deeper into the Bible, deeper into prayer. And then we're going to have interest groups. These are sort of groups for people who've got a particular passion or an interest in an area. It might be around sports. When I first came to St. Mark, so we arrived in November 2020, I heard about this cycling group. And uh, there was this whole bunch of people that were cycling around Richmond Park every Saturday morning. And I thought, wow, that sounds really fun. I'd like to be a part of that. I thought, well, how do I find out about it? And then a few months later, we were doing our focus weekend here. And as part of that focus weekend, that cycling group had gathered together. And we were having lunch here on the common outside. And the cycling group arrived across the common. And again, I must admit, I thought, oh, I, I feel a little bit left out. Like, I want to be a part. How do you find out? So I was chatting to this guy called Andy Britt, and uh, some of you will know him. And he was like, yeah, yeah, some of us get together and we go cycling. I was like, well, that sounds really fun. How do I find out about it? He's like, oh, I don't really know. You just sort of, you know, was this all people know? And I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if that was on the website, if that was one of our groups? And he looked at me, he was like, yeah, that would be fantastic. And it turned out that on that morning, as they'd been cycling around Richmond Park, They'd stopped, and he said that he'd had this amazing conversation with someone that he'd never met before. And she was going through a really, really difficult time. And just in that moment, as they were grabbing a drink of water, just resting for a bit, they said, well, should we just, should we just pray together for this situation? And so they prayed in their full lycra and helmet and all that kind of stuff. And I said to Annie, I was like, that is fantastic. Like, isn't that church? Isn't that church cycling around Richmond Park just as much as gathering together in someone's home over food on a Tuesday night when two or more are gathered in my name? There I will be with them. So it may be your interest is sports in some way. And, you know, we're going to start a badminton group if people want to do stuff. There's football that people can do. But it may be other issues. Uh, the stuff that we've been doing about racial diversity and inclusion, we want to start a group that's going to continue to talk about this whole area of race. And what does that look like for us as a church? Maybe you're passionate about creation care, and that group is going to be gathering together. So there's grow groups, interest groups, and then we've got location groups. Maybe you've got a particular passion for an area where you live or where you work. It may just be more convenient for you to connect in that place. Each one of us in the church is going to be able to go online. So a lot of this information is going to be on our website, which we'd encourage you to go to. And I just want to show you right now how you can register. So you just check this out. So you'll be able to go, go connect groups. And then you can look down and you'll be able to see all of the different groups under those different categories of growth, interest, location groups. We really want to encourage you just to have a browse all the information is there when they meet, whether it's online, in person, contact details. And there's something for everyone. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this on a termly basis. And the reason for that is we want, it to, we want to make it really simple for people to join. And we want to make it really simple for people to leave if they would like to. If you've been part of a church for a while, you know sometimes you join a group and you feel like, Oh my goodness, this feels like a life sentence. And how do I say to the leaders that I don't really want to go anymore? Well, of course, you don't. Because you're Christian, generally, and you're nice. So what you do is you just stop going. And people vote with their feet. And so we want to kind of just free all of that up. And so if at the end of one term you think, oh, actually, I'd quite fancy going to so-and-so's group. You know, I'm going to go and check that out. You can find out all the details on the website. Now, you can be part of more than one group if you would like to. 
We want to encourage people to have consistency. We think that's great for relationships and accountability and all of those kind of things. But it may be that you want to be part of an interest group on a Saturday morning, but you want to be part of a growth group on a Tuesday night. There's going to be all kinds of possibilities to connect in that way. We also want to make it simple for people to lead groups. Again, if you've been in church for a number of years, you'll know that you might be approached at some point. Would you consider leading a group? And if you pluck up the courage to say yes, 25 years later, you're still running a house group. And you think, how on earth do I stop? But this gives us an opportunity for people to start. You may just want to do something for a term. You may think, gosh, I want to just get people together. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I'm interested in. You know, maybe I could run a group. Help create a place for people to belong. We want to assure you that we're not stopping anything. If you want to stay exactly where you are in the group that you've been going to recently or for many years, that is absolutely wonderful. We really, really want to encourage that. But what we want to do is we want to create space for more, more opportunities to grow, more opportunities to lead, more opportunities fundamentally to belong. And we want to give you just a little flavor right now of just two or three of our new groups and uh, really just to hear from some people who are part of the church and why they are a part of a group here. Let's take a look at this. Oh, this was not as comfortable as I thought it was going to be. We've been in a group about five years at St. Mark's. So I've been in a group probably for the last seven years, I think. I think it's just kind of plugging into the church, plugging into the community, finding great friends. Actually, the best friendships that have been formed was in the group. We wanted to join a group because we had just moved to London, we didn't know anyone in the UK, didn't have family here, didn't, um, yeah, and basically uh, came to St. Mark's and loved it, but it is a big church, so getting to know people uh, wasn't the easiest, and that was just a way to really get plugged in. It has just helped me feel more connected to the church community, and just made me feel like I know more people. So the thing I love about the cycling group at St. Mark's is it's a great way to introduce new people to, to the sport. It's a great way to bring together people who are really keen about cycling. And whether you want a short ride or whether you want a long ride, there's cycling rides to cater for all. I think one of the things I like most about being in a group is seeing the transformation over time. So when you're doing life together over a year, two years, three years, four years, you start to see real change in people and, and that's sometimes through the hardest things. <laughs> I can't take myself seriously. This is great. This is going to So as it says, you can find out more on the website and all of the details are there. You can peruse over the next couple of days. And the sign up is going to be possible from Wednesday the 19th. So that's when you can officially sign up uh, to a group. And we really want to encourage you to do that. Now, I recognize that in many ways, I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, you're all here. You, you've already said, okay, I'm going to go on a Sunday and I want to be part of this community. But we also know that sometimes we can be part of a big group but still feel like we don't belong. And we still feel like we're a bit on the fringe. And that's been just one of the huge challenges of this time during the pandemic. Some people who were super plugged into church for whatever reason, through no fault of anybody's, they've just found themselves on the edges of things. And a lot has changed. But we, as your pastors, we just want to encourage you in this moment, just plug in somewhere. Find a place 
to belong. And it may not be here. It may be that you're checking this church out and you're thinking, well, okay, could I find myself here? Maybe it's not, but find another church to be a part of and belong to. But if you would like to be a part of what's happening here, we would be so delighted to welcome you in to this community, into this family.